So um, welcome to our last session. Uh, um, for those that I didn't meet in the last panel, my name is uh, Brian Buckley, the Director of Health Equity Initiatives for NCQA. I'm joined here uh, really in a fireside conversation with our President Peggy O'Kane and Christine Toppy, our Vice President of State Affairs. So I want to just reflect uh, so much of the great work and just lessons learned and themes for the day. This is very casual here, but there has been so many uh, words of wisdom that I think we wanted to make sure we just re-emphasize. And I also wanna, before going into our spiel, just wanna again thank our sponsors. I have been seeing so many amazing conversations and they, as Peggy said earlier, they took a bet on us as this was our inaugural health equity forum. So just a round of applause for our sponsors for supporting us through this. And so um, I'll just get straight into it because uh, it's been a long day for people. I feel like everyone's like, I feel all the excitement here. So I'll switch to you, Peggy, first on just what have you been hearing for the day? Like there's been a lot of great speakers today. I, I just can't believe the, uh, the caliber of all the talks. I think they're just amazing. And um, I, I think that what really inspires me is the dedication. It sounds kind of trite to say that, but you can feel it, and you can feel people inspiring each other, and um, that was one of the goals of this thing. So um, I'm just gonna say a couple more things. I don't remember who said this, but somebody was saying one size does not fit all, and, um, and we were about to do an intervention that we, we would have been setting ourselves back. And so it's kind of, there's just been a lot of wisdom in this room, I think, and um, people, that are very deliberate and not hanging back, but also thoughtful about like, how could this backfire and how are we gonna do this right? So, great. I love that. What have you been hearing so far, especially as we think about um, the morning focus on policy? I know that was a big uh, inspiration uh, for that policy focus. Yeah. Um, I mean, ditto Peggy's comments. Obviously, we were we designed the day uh, with a very certain intention. Um, I think we've achieved that goal from all the feedback I've been getting directly from folks throughout the day. Um, so I'm just very pleased uh, that that's been your experience. Um, and I think one of the things that stood out to me was uh, the theme I, that that um, the the opportunity for uh, states to align their policy objectives so that there is um, more of a unified message about the expectations from the state down through the plans, through the health systems, down to the provider, and ultimately for the experience of the patient. That's, that's one of the takeaways that we want to bring from California to the rest of the country. We think there's an opportunity. We want other states to understand that they have the ability to, um, you know, have a better more aligned experience, and, and why that's important, because um, states are significant payers for healthcare, they are significant regulators of healthcare, and, um, and um, collaboration is doable uh, if the environment is right, and you have the, the right folks leading your agencies and the right folks at the top um, to make it happen. So I think that that was a really critical part of uh, you know, the message that we wanted to, to showcase today and certainly one of the things that, that folks took away. Um, one of the quotes that I heard, which is a separate uh, policy or, or uh, observation, was actually in the provider panel and they were talking about, so this is like all the way down to, you know, provider systems and, and uh, the F FQHC who is presenting Altamed and Bihu Sander. And she said, when, when she brings the um, expression, there is no quality without equity, Internally, her IT department says there is no quality without IT. <laughs> Which gave me a good chuckle, gave the room a good chuckle. Uh, it's hysterical. Know, <laughs> it is, it is, right? So, uh, but I think that that conveys, you know, their work to internally bring the equity message into the company and all of the different parts of the organization that have to own it. We heard that, I think, that theme throughout the day uh, from the policy panel and really kind of doing that internal reflection, that DEI reflection, and you know, is my organization doing the work that we need to do to own you know, the charge of actually helping to create an equitable environment and it starts internally? 
Um, so I think that that was another really important theme that I heard on several different panels today. Anything else to add to that? Well, I, I, I just wanted to comment on the audience because I think some of you are speakers and some of you aren't, but you know, when I got upstairs to go to lunch and I saw this big line, my heart sank. <laughs> and then I realized that these people, they weren't agitated, they weren't impatient, they were just talking to each other and there was just this buzz in the room. It was fantastic. So give yourselves a hand here. You guys have been fantastic. Yeah, I think building on that, um, the one uh, folks that heard, and I know my the, the NCK staff are like, he's going to mention this again. I know he's about to do, but we're going to talk about the Justice League. And there was like this whole idea that one, you know, each one of you that's here, you know, you all have a commitment to health equity. You wouldn't travel all the way over here unless you did. And it's us really creating this watchtower together. And I think that's one thing I heard quite a lot throughout each and every panel. This work cannot be done alone. We have to have alignment, not just with health plans, but with healthcare delivery, with providers, with CBOs. And how are you really building that alignment and gathering those perspectives and giving context, I think, to the data that we are hearing? Um, and so I know, Christine, you, you don't like to always talk about the challenges here, but it, <laughs> I, I'm curious, like, where do you both, like, as you have heard of some of the challenges where you, you it's kind of a bubbled up challenge that you see that needs to be addressed. And I love what, um, Peggy, you said at the beginning, you know, we know that this is a collective effort and we're not there fast enough. So where do you think are some of those challenges that, you know, we should start thinking about collectively as a whole as well? Um, so I think one of the points that Peggy mentioned in her opening remarks in which I feel like are worth um, reiterating is the idea that we use the term health equity. We're comfortable with that, that terminology, or most people are in this room. It's not the case everywhere. And it's even not the case within California everywhere. And I, I know that from a conversation with an organization that was being very candid with us about their experience. And, and so the, the point of raising that is that it's not that you can't have the conversation, but as we learn in community health, <laughs> you meet people where they are. If you want to be able to start a conversation, you have to meet people where they are. And the terminology may need to change. Um, so it, maybe it's not about the term equity. Maybe it's about you know, some other circumstance that related to equity. But, but, but having that sensitivity around uh, if you want to affect change in an area, you have to understand the people you're talking to, know your audience. Um, and, and start there, and so that you can start to build that trust, so that you can start to um, you know, affect change in, in a way that is, is meaningful and tangible. And so I think the challenge is for us to not change the narrative, but to be sensitive to how we're expressing it, and where we're expressing it, and when. Love that. Well, I hope we never have to give up the word health equity, honest to God. I mean, you know, there's just a line that I don't want to cross. I, I mean, so this is a big deal. I think it really is. But, um, you know, let's face it. Um, some people are just not, not interested in, you know, the health of human beings. It's just how it is. I think another big challenge is that we're, you know, we're used to having change, like, happen. And people lose the plot. People get tired. They say, oh, it's not working. You know, you have to be relentless about this. It took us a long time to get to this ridiculous place. And it's going to take a long time to get out of this. So I just think the more we can do to kind of support each other and keep this feeling of excitement, you know, 5, 10, 20 years out, um, because it's going to take all that for us to really make the changes that are going to be necessary. Love that. Um, one challenge that I was hearing about, um, I was at uh, um, Rachel Harrington's panel on data, and I, I saw that was a full, really full panel, because I can clearly see that was the pebble in a lot of people's shoes. But one of the quotes by one of the panelists, which I think I wrote down, was, we need to have a focus on data equity. It's a fundamental piece of health equity. Data is about people. Everyone deserves to be acknowledged and seen as part of the picture. And I thought that was a really important quote right there because often, even as we're talking about health equity, we forget that these are people that are being impacted. Um, 
like there are our friends, our families, our, the sense of future people that will also be impacted by this. So I know that that was one of the challenges. How do we make sure people feel seen in their data, feel acknowledged, and that their data is being used appropriately to advance their health and health outcomes? And so um, that was one of the challenges I think I heard. And so, Christine, I know this. Um, one of the questions that we have talked about before, because I know some folks are like, man, this is very California sometimes based, but I know we, when we were even putting this together, we wanted to be intentional that yes, California is doing an amazing job and we need to take some of those lessons, but how are other states, because you're working with all the states uh, from the NCQA perspective, how can they take some of this and apply it to their state? Yeah, I think that's 100% our intention, is to take the great work that California has done, has, has already started, uh, is well underway with, and is frankly um, very um, generous in sharing their lessons on what's working, what's not working, cause as they go through this. Uh, so I think that all of that is relevant for us to share, uh, because it is a journey, and um, sometimes when you try things, they don't work, and, and being able to kind of own that and recognize it is important. Um, we're seeing a lot of interest across the country in, in our health equity programs, the accreditation programs, which are, will be the focus of day two, the performance metrics, the stratification of the HEDIS um, performance uh, measures. And, um, you know, as a starting place for some states, um, it's some of, I, I recall having a, a conversation with one state that said, you know, we've never even talked about equity in, at the cabinet level. And, and so this was kind of, and this was last year. And so this was a first step for them is just really initiating a conversation about what, what does that mean for our state? So I think for, from our perspective, we've got you know, a whole slew of states um, that, are, that have ju jumped on board the health equity train and are just, you know, see ya. They're, 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 you know, the train has left the station, they are taking action, they are addressing disparities, they are kind of doing all of the things that they can uh, within the, the scope of their waivers, within the scope of their authority, and within the kind of will of the, of the state, you know, to, to improve the experience and the life of the people that they serve. Um, and then we have other states that are, you know, are feeling their way through. Um, and there's some surprises in there. We have several southern states, and we can share this information. It's all up on our website about who's adopted the health equity accreditation program. You know, but Mississippi, Georgia, Kansas, all states that have um, added the health equity accreditation requirements to Medicaid. And so for us, as I was saying before, we, you know, so Medicaid is beginning it, but this equity is not the sole responsibility of Medicaid. It is you know, the responsibility of all of the agencies within the state that, ha that are either paying for care or regulating um, those that deliver care. And so that's part of our charge within my team and, and the public policy team at NCQA is to, is to carry that message. To, we do a lot of dot connecting. We, we, you know, for those of us that, or for those of you that work with me in California, you know that I'll say, hey, have you talked to so-and-so? <laughs> um, because I think that's one of the services that we, we um, can and should provide is, is that dot connecting. And that's across states, within states, what have you. Um, so I think that that's really both a challenge because not every state's receptive to this at this point yet, yet. Yes. Um, but, but we're working on them and you know, patience is a virtue. Exactly. Um, and then the final question before we start to conclude for Peggy, because um, many leaders have come and say, you know, this work is hard. Any advice you would give them as they are trying to navigate how they ingrain health equity into all of their work? I think for me, what I notice is that people who are, especially clinicians, when they really start to think of this, the injustice of it and the foundational nature of it, you know, it like affects every aspect of people, people's lives, your health does. It's to get to that passion that's, that's, I think, why people go into healthcare, and to kind of activate that and let them kind of move the agenda, let them help. Because often, like politicians, you know, they may not sort of get this in, that way, in the way that people that are facing inequities uh, in their daily work 
really understand. So I, th I think that's a, that's a tremendous underutilized tool of advancing good public policy. Thank you for that. Any last remarks before we move to closing? I just want to say how um, exciting it is for me to see the level of enthusiasm from the attendees today. It's, um, it's, it's such a charge, a positive charge for those of us that are focused on, on doing this work. And it's very reinforcing for us to feel your excitement, hear your questions, understand you know, the challenges that you're facing from your various perspectives. You know, we know that we've got a wide cross-section of participants, you know, plans are the typical folks that we, we expect to see. This audience is, you know, a, a lot of plan participation, health system participation, community-based organization participation, or two health departments in, in one of the sessions I attended. I was so excited. Um, so, you know, that was part of our goal for the day, was to broaden our broaden our audience so that we can um, make it clear that our, we view our charge as being, you know, to create a set of standards to support those that are charged with, with delivering on health equity, but to support all those who are also working as part of the larger um, care continuum. So I just wanted to acknowledge that and, and applaud your participation. So thank you. And, and what I would be remiss, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, clap. <laughs> <laughs> We like shameless bragging. I just, I just heard Brian talking about it. It's really good. I just want to do a shameless brag about these two uh, because, you know, we have a lot of introverts at NCQA, but these two don't fall into that category. <laughs> they are tireless. They are out there. They're meeting with people. They're making connections. And I just want to say, you know, a lot of, a lot of the good that we do comes from their zeal and from others like them that I can't name one by one. So thanks. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> so a couple things. Once I want to again thank our sponsors for, you know, really supporting the great conversations that have happened today. Also, um, I think we're going to put up on the screen, um, if you are not added to the LinkedIn group, this is where this conversation, and we can keep the momentum of the conversation going. So, you know, put your phone up there. There's a QR code. Join the LinkedIn group. If you have resources or something inspired you where there's like, hey, you know, we actually solved that problem, and there's a resource, put that in the group. Ask questions in the group. Hey, what is everyone doing around X, Y, and Z? This is an opportunity, guys, for to keep the momentum going. As Christine mentioned, our intention was that we create connection for everyone and that this collective intelligence can really help advance health equity. Also, a couple people have asked, they're like, man, where did you get your fancy pin here? Which, uh, Including me. <laughs> this is true. Which says quality of care is equitable care. There is a little fishbowl out there with those pins in there. Take one, because you also are advancing health equity. So make sure that you are represented and when you show up into rooms, you're like, this is, this is my why, and this is why I'm doing this. Thank you all for being here for day one. For the folks that uh, will be leaving us, we will miss you. For the folks that will be here tomorrow, look forward to seeing you. Take care.